Hello, welcome everyone. This is Jim Spore from IBM and Prasant Pulavarthi from Microsoft and I are happy to welcome you to this session on Onyx. And um, we hope you're all staying safe in these uh, pandemic times and sorry we can't all be together in Austin, Texas. But uh, we'd like to uh, just briefly introduce ourselves. I'll, I'll uh, go first. So uh, I'm Jim Spore. I'm the director of the Cognitive Open Technology Group at IBM. I was also recently elected uh, Technical Advisory Council chair, Chairperson at Linux Foundation AI. And you should know that Onyx is a graduated project of the Linux Foundation AI. Also recently, I was elected to the Onyx Steering Committee. Uh, you can see my LinkedIn and a few other links there. Uh, Prasant is uh, the principal program manager at the uh, at Microsoft for artificial intelligence platforms. He's also an Onyx steering committee member and an Onyx co-founder. So today I'd like to just uh, briefly in my portion of the presentation take you through a little bit of the past, present, and future of Onyx. I'll do that by just describing uh, a, a little bit of the work that's happened in the past in Onyx, one of our recent community meetings, and then challenge you all to get involved in the Onyx community uh, briefly. So what is Onyx? Onyx is a, um, and why do we need a standard like Onyx? And if you look at the left part of this screen, uh, screen you see uh, TensorFlow, PyTorch, Spark, Cafe2, Keras, lots of different uh, uh, machine learning, deep learning frameworks out there, and they're all in their own unique silos. They own, all have their own unique uh, representation and format. So by having uh, Onyx as a standard interchange format, this, is, this allows uh, inference to be optimized and all of the different tools to interoperate. And when you get a copy of these slides, you can see here at the top, I've got Nick Pentry. This is a slide from one of his presentations. Um, all of these are hyperlinks that can take you out to um, additional information about Onyx. Again, I like this uh, slide by Jagreet Cargill. He also shows the different uh, tools that are out there. Onyx is an interchange format, and um, we'll get into it in just a little bit more depth shortly. So the best way to learn about the past of Onyx is to take a website tour. If you go out to onyx.ai, uh, I encourage you to first check out the news. If you look at the news, Onyx has been around a few years. And um, as you look at the news, you'll see things like the version 1.7 release just came out. Uh, lots of news items in there talk about new Onyx members tool vendors joining the community, lots of exciting information there, um, and also uh, information about um, upcoming community meetings and other activities around Onyx. So please do check out the Onyx website, uh, check out the news. The next thing you might want to look at is, uh, is the about box, some getting started information. There's lots of different ways to get started with Onyx, uh, building models, using models from the model zoo. Uh, and then there's a number of support tools as well. Um, if you want to uh, go out to the GitHub, the link is there from the Onyx website. And also there's a getter uh, if you want to join in and be welcomed into the community. I urge you to go out first to get started with the website and, and check out those aspects. To learn about where Onyx is today, uh, recently we had our first virtual Onyx community meeting. Uh, that link will take you out to uh, all of the presentations, the recording of the presentation. Um, after a brief welcome and updates, we had the partner presentations. This is typical of the Onyx community meetings. IBM's chief data officer uh, welcomed us to the uh, work that IBM is doing with Onyx. Then we had a great presentation by Huawei on MindScore and what they're doing with Onyx. Microsoft runtime optimization, a uh, great presentation there. Xilinx is doing a lot with the FIN project and FPGAs with Onyx. Had a fantastic presentation about how Onyx is being used in genomics from UC Santa Cruz. Um, then Microsoft presented more of the work they're doing uh, with Azure and OCR. And um, many people are familiar with MathWorks. MathWorks is also uh, 
uh, tool vendor that uh, uses Onyx, and uh, we had a fantastic presentation. So I encourage you, if you want to see a snapshot of where Onyx is today, to go out to this uh, most recent community meeting and check that out. In the community meetings after the uh, partners present, uh, the SIGs, each of the different SIGs present, each of the different working groups present, and uh, the SIG for infrastructure and, and operators and various working groups, uh, which are short-term initiatives that the community starts, um, also presented. Um, a few of the highlights of the last community meetings, there were over 200 registrants and over um, 100 different organizations. I believe this is the largest that we've had at any community me meeting. Uh, Onyx continues to grow and we continue to welcome uh, new organizations and individuals to the community. Uh, this chart shows some of the tremendous growth uh, that we've seen in the uh, Onyx community. Um, the pull requests were uh, up uh, by 11%, uh, contributors up by 21%, GitHub stars up by 22%. Uh, GitHub forks up 31%. Amazingly, published papers about Onyx over, up over 111%, and the model zoo up over 24%. And this, uh, I should mention, is the progress over the last year in April. Since then, there's been um, even more progress. And uh, I put those in red here. You can see that uh, uh, just even since April, the Onyx community has been growing. and um, uh, we're excited to uh, uh, see this growth and um, encourage you to get involved. Um, this chart right here just shows, uh, this was also presented at the last community meeting. There's even been more members joining, but you can see uh, constantly adding new members to the uh, Onyx community. Uh, now, just in closing, before handing it over to Prasant to tell you uh, more about uh, Onyx at Microsoft and getting into some of the details, uh, as I mentioned at the beginning, Onyx is a graduated project of the Linux Foundation Artificial Intelligence. And if you haven't gone out to visit the Linux Foundation AI and seen the uh, other projects there, the incubating projects, the graduated projects, I encourage you to go out there and take a look at the um, Linux Foundation AI landscape. This, this is a diagram which shows lots of different open source projects that are associated with, um, that are on GitHub. Over 250 GitHub repos projects are, are indicated in the landscape diagram. Together, they have a combined 1.4 million stars, uh, come from companies and organizations with 12 trillion market cap, uh, some of the ones from startups, uh, total of 5 billion investment. So really, if you're interested in uh, artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, please go out and take a look at this Linux Foundation AI landscape. And I would have to say right at the center of it is Onyx. Because if you look at all of these different tools and uh, each with their own formats, you really get a sense of the need for uh, for Onyx, a standard uh, interchange format. So um, uh, again, you know, sorry we're not there in Austin to interact with you directly, but we do have a chat window open. You can start putting questions in the chat. And we really would like to find a way to welcome you into this um, Onyx community. Now, I'd like to uh, turn things over to uh, Prashant and, and uh, are you there? Hey, thanks so much, Jim. Uh, hey, everyone. I'm Prasant Pulvarthi. Um, and uh, today I'd like to take a few minutes to talk to you about Onyx in practice. Um, why do we use it at Microsoft? And um, give you some tips on how you can use it uh, as well. So a little bit of background. Um, at Microsoft, AI and ML are used in all of our products. Uh, we have a, a kind of a diverse set of products that sp span the spectrum of solutions. And they all have different uh, um, machine learning components being used in them. And this means that um, it's there are a large number of people developing AI and ML solutions for use in these products. And they're using a variety of different tools to do that job. So 
we talked to a lot of these teams at Microsoft and uh, we worked with them closely as being as part of the uh, AI platform team. And we identified a number of uh, common themes uh, that were slowing people down as they developed ML solutions and tried to deploy them into production. So the common problems that people were facing are listed here. So a top issue that people had was that the inference latency was too high to put into production. They developed this really awesome model uh, that did the task that they were trying to do, but then to put it into the production service or to put it into the actual app. but they needed to deploy into a C Sharp uh, or a C++ or even a Java app. So they're using you know, popular Pythonic toolkits, uh, whether it's scikit-learn, PyTorch, TensorFlow. Uh, and then they were trying to figure out, okay, well, how do I take this model that I've just developed in Python and fit it into my production application, which is not written in Python? There were also a number of teams who were trying to run their models on edge and IoT devices. So they can train in the cloud, uh, but then they need to figure out how do I make this work on this much smaller device um, that doesn't have the full power and capabilities of the cloud. Uh, in some cases, the same model needed to be run on different hardware. So the same application is going to run on different operating systems and it's cross-platform. It works on different types of hardware, uh, different uh, GPU vendors or different CPU vendors. Um, and they need to be able to run the same model across this, um, this variety of, of different platforms. Another issue was that some teams uh, need to be able to take models from different people who use different frameworks and run them all uh, in their product. Um, and what, these are products like Windows or SQL Server. Um, and because those, those products have customers who use a variety of tools. And those products, Windows and SQL Server, for example, have to support models that come in with a different, um, various different formats. More recently, uh, especially with the popularity of transformer models for natural language processing, we've seen that training very large models uh, takes way too long, and it also impacts agility. So all of these uh, items listed here are bas were basically impacting machine learning productivity for our data scientists and developers. So the solution for us was Onyx and Onyx Runtime. Um, and Onyx, you know, Jim just gave you a little bit of information about it, and we're going to talk a little bit more, um, is this common format that allows you to represent models from various different um, frameworks, uh, PyTorch, TensorFlow, Kara, Scikit-Learn, uh, a whole host of them um, in, in the common format. And then the Onyx runtime is a highly optimized uh, runtime, uh, highly um, compact. Uh, it's only a few megabytes. Uh, it's cross-platform, runs on um, all the operating systems and various uh, devices and hardware accelerators. Basically takes these Onyx models and runs them uh, really well on a variety of uh, platforms. So basically, this was the situation we were having. There were different training frameworks being used. Uh, and they all had, and the models generated from these frameworks had to be deployed to different types of devices uh, and different types of uh, hardware accelerators in those devices. And with Onyx Runtime and Onyx, basically our developers and machine learning scientists got the freedom to use a tool of their choice. And, and they were able to uh, deploy their solutions uh, to these different targets uh, with strong performance and uh, compatibility across a variety of platforms and accelerators. So I'm going to give a couple of examples uh, of this. Scenarios that we're using in Microsoft. And then I'm going to dive into how you can uh, use it for your own scenarios. So one example is speech. Um, so Microsoft has a speech service that's used in a lot of our products, uh, Xbox, Office. Uh, it's available as a cognitive service from Microsoft Azure as well. Um, and the, the speech service basically uses Onyx Runtime uh, to power uh, their, their product. And they didn't always use Onyx Runtime, but they chose to use Onyx Runtime because it gave them an improvement in agility and in performance. Um, for agility, they were able to reduce, uh, they had a 10x reduction in time, basically, to take a model from development to production. And so why is that? Well, with Onyx Runtime and Onyx, they didn't have to rewrite the model um, 
into the, the language that's needed for their production system. Uh, they didn't have to spend a lot of time tuning it uh, and, and manually optimizing it for their production uh, scenario. They automatically got all of those benefits by using Onyx Runtime. Um, and then for performance, you know, at, once they put it in, they, they got more latency improvements. And then I'm also listed here that they got accuracy improvements. So you might be wondering, how does that work? Well, it ties back to the agility. Um, because they because they were able to iterate on more types of models and more types of improvements, um, they were able to come up with new types of models that they could deploy that gave accuracy improvements. Um, also, because of the uh, latency improvements, they were use, able to use larger models uh, without exceeding their latency budget. So speech, like I mentioned, is part of our um, Microsoft's cognitive services. Um, and there are a whole host of different services in this um, portfolio that are using Onyx Runtime. The speech to text service, the text to speech, computer vision, custom vision, ink recognizer, uh, visual search, image search, uh, are just some of the different services that are making use of Onyx Runtime um, to deliver their, their uh, product. A few other examples. Azure Connect, um, if you're, I don't know if you're familiar with this. Uh, it's basically a small um, uh, device that you can connect into your uh, PC with the USB, and it um, allows you to use uh, depth sensing and, and uh, uh, tracking uh, capabilities of the, the cameras that are part of that device, of, of all the sensors that are in that device. Um, so this comes with the SDK that you can run on your desktop machine. Um, and they provide different machine learning models to do things like body tracking. And when they made, started making use of Onyx Runtime, they got a significant improvement in the performance, 7.8x uh, here, uh, for, the, for the first frame processing time. Um, now, the interesting thing to call out here is that this is a scenario where some people use the Azure Connect SDK on their desktop PC, but there are also a lot of scenarios where they want to run it on smaller devices, like the NVIDIA Jetson. Um, so this is an ARM-powered uh, device, uh, but it has a GPU in it. So with Onyx Runtime, they're able to run the same runtime and the same model on both of these devices. Um, and it gives that cross hardware platform uh, support that we were talking about earlier. So another uh, example, um, or rather elaborating on that, um, we have this portability is an important scenario that comes up often. Um, people are running the same model on laptops and PCs. Uh, they're running them on these edge devices, these IoT devices like the, the UpSquare or the, the Jetson. Um, and with Onyx Runtime, you can use the same model and the same application code across these different platforms. So here, you know, we're showing that um, Onyx Runtime is being used uh, with a uh, Onyx uh, model, uh, and they're using the Python API. Um, and they're running on these different devices with different hardware accelerators. So on the PC, they're using CUDA um, for the NVIDIA GPU. On the UpSquare device, they're using OpenVINO for the, the built-in uh, VPU. Uh, and then on the Jetson, they're using the, the TensorRT uh, for the GPU. Um, and, and basically, they're able to get the same uh, results uh, running on these different models. Um, the underlying hardware, of course, will give different performance, but with Onyx Runtime and Onyx, you can be rest assured that you're getting the best performance that you can out of the, the hardware that's available to you. And you don't have to go do a lot of customizations and try to tune it for the different hardware. So you save a lot of uh, time. So another um, uh, solution here uh, that, that makes use of Onyx Runtime is is Windows ML. So Windows ML is part of uh, the Windows operating system. It's basically an application um, API that uh, enables people to inference machine learning models without having to worry about installing all the different drivers and um, you know, out libraries that are needed to make use of your GPU or BPU or other um, uh, hardware acceleration device. It does this by making use of uh, DirectML, which is based on DirectX. Um, so every, um, uh, this basically uses all the, the drivers that come with Windows and with devices that are compatible with Windows to make it really easy to do machine learning inferencing. And so when Windows uh, was building this out, they chose to use Onyx Runtime because they, it gives them a common format 
for models to accept. So as a, as a data scientist, you can create your models with TensorFlow or PyTorch or Scikit-Learn. You export them to Onyx, and then you can run it with Windows. And Windows doesn't have to worry about uh, making sure that all the frameworks are installed and updated, and uh, or, the, or the application developer doesn't have to do that either because it's part of the installed operating system. Um, and, and because of the extensible nature of Onyx Runtime, it can work with the different types of hardware accelerators. Um, so DirectML basically just plugs in as a hardware accelerator and itself provides kind of an abstraction layer on different types of, of hardware, whether it's GPU or VPU or other types of devices. And of course, Onyx Runtime also has highly optimized uh, CPU uh, inferencing. So some other customers um, that use Onyx Runtime, uh, Azure, as you know, has many customers. Uh, one example is a ISV who uses um, uh, Onyx Runtime for economic scenario modeling. Uh, they they um, basically train their financial models uh, in Python with scikit-learn, but their production uh, environment is pure C sharp. So and how do they go from these Pythonic environments, you know, whether it's Scikit-Learn or PyTorch, uh, into the C Sharp? Well, they chose to use Onyx Runtime because the C Sharp API made it really easy. Uh, they can just train their models as they normally do, uh, convert them to Onyx, and then run them with Onyx Runtime. Um, so they were primarily looking for this cross-language support, but they also happened to get a bonus uh, 2x speed up when they did that. So some very um, more recent news is our work with transformer inferencing. Uh, earlier this year, we announced uh, optimizations in Onyx Runtime to really provide um, kind of breakthrough inferencing speed for transformer models like BERT and GPT-2. And uh, Hugging Face is a popular library uh, of different transformer models. Uh, it's, it's hugely popular in the NLP space. Uh, and it, they provide models that can be trained with either PyTorch or TensorFlow. Well, about a month or two ago, uh, Hugging Face uh, added new capabilities to allow you to save your model as Onyx models. Uh, so they have this, you know, their library is called Transformers, and they added this module called Convert Graph to Onyx, and it basically generates an Onyx model for you. And the reason for doing that is once you have your Onyx model um, for these transformers, uh, they run really fast when you run with Onyx Runtime. So there's a blog post that we did about this, and the, and the graph here is from that blog post. It basically shows that when you use Onyx Runtime to inference these transformer models, you get significant speed up, whether you're using CPU or GPU. Um, and, and, and because Onyx Runtime is compatible with frameworks like PyTorch and TensorFlow, you don't have to change how you do the training aspect of it. You can just start getting these inference benefits by plugging in Onyx Runtime. So another recent announcement that we had was transformer training. So just like we optimized the inferencing of transformers, we've also been able to optimize the training of these models. Um, so these models can sometimes take a very long time to train, depending on uh, the complexity of the model and how much um, data you're trying to feed into it. Um, and some of these models can actually take days or even weeks to train. And so any optimizations that can be provided are a huge savings, both in terms of agility and in cost for these users. So with Onyx Runtime's latest capabilities for training, um, we're able to bring that cost down. Um, so it integrates with PyTorch currently in the, the preview release that we've uh, put out there, integrates with PyTorch and the TensorFlow is coming soon. Um, and it basically uh, incorporates all the latest algorithms and techniques um, that are available. Uh, Microsoft has published some techniques uh, called uh, DeepSpeed and Zero and Parasail and Addison. Um, there are different papers and different kind of uh, proof of concept uh, uh, projects out there that show these algorithms, but we wanted to make sure that they were available in like one place that was easy to use and uh, fully supported. Um, and that, that was on its runtime. So all of these are incorporated in there, so you don't have to kind of pick and choose different libraries. They're all just uh, there. 
And this is being used by different teams at Microsoft already, uh, Office, Visual Studio, et cetera. They use it for their production models. Um, and it's available as a preview uh, for anyone to use on, on the GitHub. And so the, the chart here shows some of the gains that we saw uh, when using Onyx Runtime with uh, PyTorch. Again, Onyx Runtime just integrates with the PyTorch framework uh, currently, um, and, and they saw significant gains, uh, about 30 to 40% savings uh, on training these very large models. And, and this is pretty significant because it goes down, for example, from eight days of training down to like four, four and a half days, which is a considerable amount of savings. All right, so I've been talking about all the different ways that um, Onyx is used at Microsoft. So I wanted to talk a little bit about how you can get started with Onyx and Onyx Runtime. So Jim mentioned uh, the model zoo, and I want to elaborate on that a little bit more. Um, so the model zoo, uh, which is available at this URL, uh, provides a variety of models that have already been pre-trained and are, are available in the Onyx format. So you can pretty much just download these models and start using them with Onyx Runtime. And we, we support both, um, well, we support a number of categories, vision, language, uh, and there's some speech models coming soon as well. Uh, and and for, for vision, for example, we have all the popular models for image classification, object detection, et cetera. Uh, and these are kind of the, the tried and uh, tested models that have been there for a while, as well as some of the latest ones, you know, whether it's YOLO v4 or uh, mask RCNN, et cetera. Um, so you can, you can basically take these, and for each of these models, there's a notebook that shows you how to use it. So it tells you how to do the input processing, how to take the image, for example, and turn it into the format that the model needs, uh, and how you, how you interpret the output of the model as well for your application. So you, this is a great way to get started easily with Onyx and Onyx Runtime. Um, so I encourage you to take a look. Uh, and we also would love folks to contribute even more models. Uh, as Jim mentioned earlier, the model zoo is has been constantly growing, um, and uh, we uh, and that's all thanks to community members who contribute their models. Another way to obtain an Onyx model is by exporting or converting an existing model. Um, so if you have your own model that you've trained yourself, you know you've written it uh, and you've trained it. Um, you can basically export it to Onyx. So all these frameworks that are shown here uh, support uh, Onyx export, and there are different ways. The APIs for do for doing that are different for different frameworks. So I'll show you a little example for some of the the more popular uh, frameworks here. So for PyTorch, the Onyx export is actually built in. There's a module called torch.onyx that allows you to export the model. So you can basically just load the Torch model. Um, and then uh, specify what kind of an input it, it should have, and then export the model uh, to uh, the Onyx format. Uh, for Keras, uh, it's again, the steps are very similar. You load the model, um, and then you convert it, and then you save it out. Uh, the Keras functionality is available in a module called uh, Keras to Onyx, which is pip installable, and then you can just uh, import it and uh, incorporate it into your, your scripts. All of these are also runnable by the, from the command line. Um, so uh, for the TensorFlow, I chose to show you kind of the, the command line version of this, where again, you can basically use the uh, TF2 Onyx uh, module um, and call the convert method on it and pass in some parameters, and it'll output the, the Onyx uh, model for you. Uh, Scikit-learn also um, works kind of similarly. There's a module called scikit learn uh, SKL to Onyx, and you can pip install that and, and import that and, and save out your file. Uh, with scikit learn, we've made a number of uh, performance optimizations. Um, so whether you're using a, a single, like a small batch size or a large batch size, um, you should see pretty good in performance improvements on that. And uh, we'll be we'll be um, uh, publishing a blog about those results uh, in the near future. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but you can try it out yourself now. So um, for Onyx Runtime, the best way to get started with this is to go to this website, onyxruntime.ai, and there's a picker there which allows you to specify the configuration that you are um, using. And you can it'll give you the instructions for how to get the, the specific module to install for that uh, particular setup. So you'll see that we support Windows, Linux, and Mac. Um, and then we support Python, C++, C Sharp, C, Java, JavaScript, and WinRT. So the JavaScript one is basically for use in Node.js. 
Um, so it, uh, it basically provides a JavaScript or a TypeScript interface that you can use uh, from your uh, Node applications. Um, and then uh, you, WinRT is, is really useful if you're writing uh, UWP apps on uh, Windows. For the architectures, uh, you know, we, we support the x64, x86, uh, ARM64, ARM32. Uh, some of these have pre-built packages, and some of them you need to um, build from source, and we provide instructions on, on how to do that. Hardware acceleration is something that I touched on a little bit earlier. We support a wide variety of hardware devices. Um, and this is done through a mechanism called execution providers. Um, so Honest Runtime has this um, execution providers um, API that allows different hardware accelerators to basically just plug in. So of course, we have a highly optimized uh, CPU implementation. Uh, we also have a, a CUDA uh, implementation uh, that, co that comes with the Honest Runtime GPU um, uh, package. And then we have different hardware um, vendors working with us to integrate their optimizations into Onyx Runtime as well. So for example, NVIDIA partners with us to integrate TensorRT uh, with Onyx Runtime. So TensorRT uh, helps accelerate uh, various models on NVIDIA GPUs. Um, and uh, it, by integrating with Onyx Runtime, you can basically get all the perf benefits that TensorRT provides, uh, as well as make sure that any Onyx Runtime model our Onyx model can run uh, because Onyx Runtime provides full support for the entire Onyx spec. So even if a particular um, uh, operation that's in a model is not supported by TensorRT, for example, Onyx Runtime will still support it as a fallback. And so the whole model will still continue to run. Similarly with uh, OpenVINO and uh, other um, solutions, other uh, accelerator solutions that are out there. Um, you know, Intel has partnered with us closely to integrate OpenVINO with Onyx Runtime so that uh, we get the performance acceleration from the, the VPU and the other optimizations that are part of uh, OpenVINO, but you still get the full Onyx uh, compatibility and support. So I encourage you to try this out. Uh, you can go uh, to this uh, site. There's also a link to go to the GitHub if you need to get the uh, source and compile it yourself. So once you have this, how do you use it? Well, we have APIs in uh, all the different languages, uh, but I just wanted to show you kind of Python and C Sharp here, um, which uh, are, are fairly simple to use. For, for Python, you know, after you pip install um, on runtime, you can basically just import it and uh, create a session. There's one session per model, basically, um, and you can initialize that session, and then you can run it by passing in the different uh, inputs. And similar, very, the, pretty much the same story for C Sharp. Uh, you use the Honest Runtime module, and then you in instantiate the inference session based on the model, and then you run it uh, by passing in the input. All right. So I want to talk a little bit about how you can get involved with the Onyx community. Um, Jim gave a very nice overview of all the uh, participation in the Onyx community, all the different people who are involved, the uh, kind of the quarterly or periodic uh, community workshops that we have, the meetups. Um, and I want to talk a little bit about the resources and the different uh, things that are happening in the community. So first, Onyx has open governance. Uh, it's part of the Linux Foundation AI, as Jim mentioned. Um, and so there's a well-documented um, uh, governance model that describes how decisions are made and how transparency is provided, et cetera. There's an annual steering committee election held. Uh, and so people can uh, run for this. There's five steering committee members. Um, and those steering committee meets every week. And the meetings are open to everyone. So people can dial in and, um, and watch those. And they can also, the meeting notes are published ahead of it, or the meeting agenda is published before it, and the meeting notes are published after. So you can always take a look at those and, and propose items for the agenda as well. Uh, the technical decisions, kind of the day-to-day -day decisions, are actually made by SIGs and working groups. Um, Jim touched on this a little, and I wanted to elaborate a little bit more. Um, so SIGs are permanent organizations that own different parts of the code. So we have four SIGs currently, one for architecture and infrastructure, one for operators, uh, one for the converters, and one for the model zoo and tutorials. Um, and so these SIGs are responsible for ensuring the health of the project uh, long term. Uh, Every repository and like every file in Onyx is owned by one of these four SIGs. Um, and so they're, they have to kind of make sure that any new features that we're adding you know, you know, are properly fit into the architecture in a, in a good way. Working groups, on the other hand, are temporary. They have a specific goal or charter. Uh, they spin up 
um, when there's in a sufficient momentum for that charter or goal. And then they work that problem until it's solved, and then they disband. Um, and it, working groups are, um, there are currently one or two active working groups. There's one for training, and then there's one for uh, release uh, management, release process. Um, and we have a number of uh, completed working groups as well. And if you go to our, our GitHub, you can kind of see the list of completed working groups. Um, there was one for quantization. They successfully added the quantization uh, support into Onyx and they disbanded. Um, and and, and uh, there's some that um, complete their mission and they, they, they basically do the investigation and they find that, hey, we don't need this or it doesn't make sense. And they disband as well. And we consider that a success as well because it was an interesting thing or useful thing for the community to look into and figure out what the right decision is. And and sometimes that's, that doesn't mean um, you know, there has to be code produced. Um, the SIGs and working groups meet periodically as well. Uh, everything is open to, uh, for the meetings. Are, the meetings are all open to everyone. And the meetings are all published on the calendar, uh, onyx.ai slash calendar. And you can see all the different meetings there. And you're welcome to attend uh, any of them. Um, the, the other thing is that uh, for the SIGs, we basically have uh, contributors and approvers. And, uh, these are the kind of the two uh, permission levels, if you will. Um, contributors uh, can um, uh, basically, uh, they're folks who contribute extensively to the Onyx project, um, and they get kind of voting rights on different decisions. And then the approvers are uh, more expert contributors who have been uh, making really good decisions for a while, and they have basically the merge permissions. Um, and so these are the open governance basically describes how these folks are selected as well. Um, and, uh, you know, everyone should aspire to kind of join those those ranks. Uh, a lot of our communication currently happens on Gitter. So the URL is listed here, gitter.com slash onyx. You can, you'll see that we have different uh, rooms for different folk, for, different, for the different SIGs and the different working groups there. Uh, you see a lot of active uh, discussion going on. So I welcome you to join that. And then of course, I encourage everyone to sign up for the mailing list. Um, we have a number of mailing lists, but this is probably the most important one to sign up for, Onyx uh, Announce. Um, the traffic is very low, but we, this is basically where we notify people about upcoming um, community workshops, uh, virtual meetups, things like that. So um, I've, I've gone through kind of how Microsoft uses Onyx uh, extensively. Uh, I've talked a little bit about how you can use Onyx. Uh, and I've talked a little bit about how you can get involved. Um, and so now we'd like to pretty much open it up to any questions that you have. Uh, and Jim and I will be happy to answer those. I also wanted to make sure that you have the research here uh, for you to follow up later. Uh, you can go to onyx.ai to learn more about Onyx. You can go to onyxruntime.ai to learn more about So thanks so much, uh, and uh, we'll, we'll take any questions now. Versant, uh, I tried to answer the one question I saw in there about uh, IBM Watson Studio support Onyx, yes. And I tried to include in that link, uh, a link to our slides on SlideShare in case anybody wanted to click on any of the hyperlinks. I think there was also a question about, I don't know if you can read it or not, Versant about the uh, Philippines there? Where can I buy? I yeah, the, uh, Azure Connect, uh, I, I don't know. Um, I can uh, respond to this question later. I believe these questions are available um, after as well and uh, make that uh, and let you know. I'll have to follow up uh, if, if you can't find the information on the Azure Connect website. Uh, I think there's another question about Azure Connect uh, availability worldwide. Um, yeah, I, I don't know offhand. Uh, I see another question about, um, can you provide some uh, information about the current state and development of pipelines, uh, basically raw data to pre-processing to training in Onyx? Um, so the pipelines are working group. There was a working group for it. Um, it, it has not been active in a while. I think there's uh, some interest in um, uh, reactivating it. So if, you're, if that's something that you're interested in, um, I would recommend uh, joining the, the Gitter channel for that. Um, and, and making your uh, views known there. Um, it is something that we're very interested in. There's some support for this today, um, especially for um, kind of uh, uh, images, um, you know, modifying images to make sure that they can uh, be sent into the uh, model. But for other types of data, um, other data types, uh, there's some more operators, et cetera, that are needed. And there's a lot of interesting discussions to be had about that uh, as well, like how, how custom 
uh, or how general should the operators be, how custom should they be, and so on. So it's a, it's a great question, and uh, I encourage you to uh, get involved in the, in the Gitter channel for Pipelines for now, and then uh, we'll uh, hopefully soon we can announce the restarting of that. And I'll just uh, add Maritz uh, to what Prasant said. There's a group that our IBM Tokyo Research Lab and our Yorktown Research Lab interested in reactivating this working group to take another look at some some particular new ideas they have. So uh, definitely we should connect and make sure you get connected into that. Uh, I guess it's a proto working group that may be formed. I see another question about uh, uh, the URL for the Gitter. Um, yeah, thanks for catching that. Uh, the correct URL is actually gitter.im slash uh, Thanks for that, correct. Uh, I see uh, another question for, are there any books coming for this subject? Uh, great question. Uh, Jim, are you planning on writing any books? <laughs> I don't have plans, but it's a great idea and we should, uh, I know it came up in our last community meeting as well. So we definitely should, uh, th there are some people that could contribute. So it's something we should uh, get a community effort going around for sure. Yeah, um, definitely. Uh, if you if you have thoughts on, on that, uh, please reach out. I uh, would love to collaborate and, and see what can be done. Uh, there are a number of uh, kind of experts in the community. And I think uh, so, uh, if we have a good um, idea there, I think uh, that's something we can, uh, and do together, yes. There's a question uh, on concept. I don't know if you saw that. Sorry, which one? There was one on concept drift. There was a question. I can't find it now. Uh, um, yeah, that uh, the question. One question I see is. Um, does the Onyx runtime log the prediction requests? Um, it's up to you. Uh, I mean, so, so Onyx runtime has some you know, debugging and logging capabilities. Uh, you can make use of them if you'd like. Uh, but Onyx runtime is basically a component that you include in your application or service. So to, in order to kind of uh, record the, the full uh, request uh, and the response, and maybe you want to record the time it takes and things like that, um, that's going to be up to your service or, or application that's hosting the Onyx runtime. Uh, and, the, and there's you know, different um, formats and different mechanisms that people use to log their request. So Onyx runtime itself doesn't handle all that, um, but it's, uh, the information is all there for you to, to do. Uh, I see another question about um, how did you manage to decrease the time of ML training? Um, so especially uh, for um, large transformer models, uh, that's where Onyx Runtime currently provides the most benefit. Um, and, and it comes down to a few things. So one is um, how, how optimized or how efficient is the uh, operator kernel um, for actually doing these different um, computations. Um, so some of our kernels have been highly optimized to make sure that they're, you know, just they, they do fewer operations, you know, et cetera, so that it runs really fast, so they're hyper-optimized um, kernels. Um, the other thing is making sure that the GPU or the hardware accelerator device is completely kept busy. So if we spend a lot of time kind of moving data back and forth between CPU and GPU, um, or waiting for other things to uh, get processed before running the computation on the GPU, you're actually spending a lot of uh, time that you could be utilizing the, the GPU more. Um, so there are a lot of... Um, Kind of optimizations and efficiencies that Onyx Runtime does to make sure that the GPU is completely kept um, uh, and is always uh, cranking on, on the computation. Uh, so that helps reduce the time as well. And then there's some other kind of algorithmic uh, uh, techniques to make sure things are being done in parallel uh, and, and so on, so that um, we, we can make it um, make the overall training uh, run faster. Um, so yeah, take, take a look um, at the, the uh, Onyx Runtime website. It links to uh, blogs that describe this work in more detail. I see another question about, um, are there any commercial deployments of Onyx-based models? Uh, yeah, so all of the scenarios that I talked about are, are commercially deployed. Um, so I talked about uh, Azure Cognitive Services, you know, which has speech and OCR and uh, vision, uh, image search and all these things. They're all using um, Onyx uh, Runtime and Onyx models. 
Um, the office uh, models for kind of everything from camera checking to uh, you know suggesting uh, you know uh, replies or, or uh, you know text to put in their email. Um, there's also um, you know uh, the, the Bing search engine uses Onyx models uh, quite a lot for different scenarios. You know whether it's uh, image, image search and kind of vision based things or um, you know, question and answering kind of natural language things uh, scenarios. So yeah, there, there are a lot of uh, commercial deployments of Onyx models um, at Microsoft. And then there are a lot of commercial deployment of uh, Onyx models outside of Microsoft as well. Uh, I mentioned one customer that uh, we work with uh, on Azure. It's a financial ISV, right? But there are a number of other ones out there as well. So definitely, definitely production grade, um, definitely being used for commercial. And MathWorks as well, of course, is um, another place you can get quick access to uh, Onyx. I see another question just, just came in about, does Onyx support CNTK? Uh, and the answer is yes. Um, so CNTK uh, has a Onyx uh, export built into it. Um, so if you're using CNTK, you can export your model to Onyx and then run it with Onyx Runtime. Yes. Uh, another question just came in about, uh, do you need to have knowledge on the hardware acceleration tools such as TensorRT and OpenVINO, or does Honest Runtime provide an abstraction layer? Um, and so the, the short answer is Honest Runtime provides an abstraction layer, like um, TensorRT and OpenVINO integrate with uh, Honest Runtime through the execution provider um, API, basically. Um, so for you, you would just be using the Honest Runtime APIs with your Onyx model. Um, and you would need to configure your installation to have, you know, TensorRT and OpenVINO, um, one of those uh, available. But when you're interacting with uh, Onyx Runtime, it's, it's pretty much the same. You, you, know, you load the model, you specify your input, uh, you run it, and then you process it. Out. Um, so this this is what makes it very easy for you to move between devices, which is one of the scenarios I mentioned earlier. Um, different teams, different companies have this requirement where their their application stack. Sometimes it needs to run on a, um, you know, a Jetson device that has TensorRT on it. Sometimes it needs to run on an Upsquare that has OpenVINO and IBPU in it. Um, and rather than having to rewrite the stack for these different devices, you can kind of use the same Onyx model, uh, same Onyx runtime API, et cetera, to access this variety. Looks like one just came in around any scholarship or certification plan. Not quite sure what he means by scholarship. I did mention there are many, you know, over, you know, hundreds of uh, Onyx uh, citations in various uh, scholarly articles. Um, uh, the certification plan, um, I don't know. What do you, how would you answer that one? That's not. Yeah, I guess, um, you know, first, I guess you know, everything is, is open source. So uh, a lot of the information is out there. If you're looking for kind of uh, um, tutorials or training or something like that, a lot of it is already out there. So you can, you can uh, take a look at that. Um, if you're trying to, uh, if you have ideas on like how, on what a certification would look like, um, uh, I'd love to hear about that. I, I'm, we haven't really thought about it, honestly. Um, you know, feel free to, um, you know, contact us or, or uh, you know, post it on the Gitter or, or attend one of the steering committee meetings and, uh, you know, or file an issue even on the GitHub and, and propose what that might look like. Um, different people use it in different ways. Um, so I, I'm not sure what that certification should look like, um, but I uh, would love to hear, um, you know, kind of the business case. Later. Oh, I see another one that just came in. What are the benefits of using Onyx in training instead of just converting to Onyx after training? Um, so they're, they're kind of solving different problems. Um, so you can certainly train in you know, your framework, PyTorch, TensorFlow, whatever, and then save it to Onyx for uh, inferencing purposes. Um, and and that, that makes, um, 
you know, the, the inference inside of things is going to allow you, it'll give, give you kind of device portability and acceleration and so on. Uh, for using honest runtime in training, um, the benefit is that your training itself will be faster than if you were just using the base framework. Um, and so uh, it, 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 it speeds up the training uh, for your transformer models currently. So you're kind of two different um, uh, scenarios uh, there. And, and you can either use one or the other uh, or both. Uh, if you're I see one more question that came in about um, scikit-learn uh, conversion. Um, does it support all the pipelines or only some of the model types? Um, it supports a variety of the model types. Uh, it is not 100% um, because there's uh, a lot of uh, stuff in there that, um, that scikit-learn has that currently is not represented. But um, uh, for all the common model types, you should be able to convert it. We have a number of people using this successfully. Um, you can take a look. So if you go to the uh, SKL, uh, scikit-learn, uh, so Onyx uh, converter or GitHub, they kind of have a, a list of the different things that are supported. Um, and and you, can, you can take a look to see whether your particular pipeline can be fully converted or not. Um, and you can also just try it, and it'll tell you what, what didn't work. All right, I think we're at time for the session. Um, so um, I'd like to, uh, I don't know, Jim, do you have any other final words? Oh, I'd just like to thank everyone for joining and stay safe and please get on the Onyx mailing list or get on the getter and join one of our next community meetings or, or one of our other meetings. Please get involved. Yeah. yeah, thanks so much for joining us. Uh, take a look at the resources. And like Jim said, uh, we'd love to have you uh, join us in our um, Onyx community online or in our, some of our uh, regular calls. So thanks again.